So in this video, I'm going to cover blood flow through the heart. And I'm going to try to make it like as simple as possible. So I start by saying that your heart is made of four chambers. They are namely the right atrium, the left atrium, the right ventricle, and the left ventricle. The difference between these two sets of chambers, the atria and the ventricles, is that the atria receive blood and the ventricle, and the ventricles pump blood away from the heart. So we're going to have to establish like certain rules here to make it easy to understand it and memorize it. So the first rule that we have is that everything that is in red represents oxygenated blood and everything that is in blue represents deoxygenated blood, oxygen rich or oxygen depleted blood. So leaving the left ventricle, I do my first set of blood vessels here that are taking oxygenated blood to the body. In the body, the tissues will feed on that oxygen and then returning from the capillaries from the main tissues, I'm going to have deoxygenated blood returning to the heart. And of course, it returns to the right atrium as the picture is showing it to you. This is a very simple representation and this actually covers like a big part of blood flow um, uh, throughout your body. This loop that we just draw here is your systemic circuit. So you have a double circuit in the heart, the systemic circuit and another circuit that is the pulmonary one. So we can draw the pulmonary circuit right now, taking blood from the right that arrives on the right atrium that is pumped into the right ventricle. That blood that moved from the right atrium and pumped to the right ventricle, now it's pumped into the, into the lungs. Of course, it's blue, so it's deoxygenated de blood. And the lungs will make it into oxygen-rich blood, because that's the function of the lungs. And this loop completes what is known as the pulmonary circuit. So far, very simple. Nothing that anybody cannot understand it. We're going to get like to a little bit more complicated now. We're going to add more rules here. So the rules that I'm going to have are that arteries pump, uh, take blood away from the heart. All arteries take blood away from the heart. All veins bring blood to the heart. Because of that, all arteries leave from ventricles and all veins arrive at the atria because the atria are the receiving chambers and the ventricles are the pumping chambers. So now we can actually give name to the different um, parts and like create like a numerical order explaining the blood flow through the heart. So I start in the left atria. The left atria pumps blood into number two here, which will be the left ventricle. And then from the left ventricle, I'll go to number three. And now, of course, we know that this is taking blood away from the heart, so therefore this is an artery. We're going to call this artery the aorta, the most important artery in your body. From the aorta, we go to number four, which will be the body. The body then returns via number five, which will be one of the, the two vena cavas that we have. We have a superior vena cava and we have an inferior vena cava. Number five then will take it, of course, to the right atrium. The right atrium will pump its contents into the right ventricle, number seven, and number seven then pumps into your pulmonary trunk, which is also an artery, but it bifurcates, so we call it a trunk because of the bifurcation, but it's a pulmonary artery. Interesting enough, it's an artery now carrying deoxygenated blood. It arrives in my number nine at the lungs, and then finally returns to the left atria via the pulmonary vein. My number 10 is my pulmonary vein, and I'll start the circuit again um, in number one in the left atria. Well, there's just like a, a little bit more uh, detail that we can add to this, is that actually naming the valves that we are seeing um, between the, the atria and the ventricles, those valves between the atria and the ventricles are called atrioventricular valves, and the valves that are leaving um, between the ventricles and the arteries that are called semilunar valves. So let's give name, we put the label down in the figure to make it easier to memorize. So I'm going to put like a step 1B here between my left atrium and my left ventricle. I have the bicuspid valve, a valve that is made of two cusps, therefore bicuspid, um, or also known as mitral valve. Now, between the left ventricle and the aorta, I have another valve that prevents the backflow 
of blood from the aorta into the left ventricle. The bicuspid prevents the backflow from the left ventricle into the atria. It's always preventing backflow in the preceding structure. So this valve now, number 2B here, it's my aortic semilunar. Semilunar means half moon or crescent shape, and they have the shape of um, a half moon. The other valve that we have here is the tricuspid valve found between the right atria and the right ventricle. This is an atrioventricular valve. So, made out of three cusps, therefore tricuspid valve. And finally, my number, last one here, which would be my number 7B, my pulmonary semilunar valve. This is perhaps the easiest diagram to memorize the blood flow through the heart. I hope you enjoyed I hope you like it. I hope you share it with your colleagues. And I hope you, this was helpful for you understanding the blood flow through the heart. Thank you.